CIA. Nice work, girls. No hard feelings? And if the party's still on. <laughs> That's a long story, Felix, but in the end, Pushkin makes a miraculous recovery. You mean this is a put-up job? Hi guys, welcome back to the James Bond Show. I'm your host, Crazy Kajimi, with no fears, limits, or substitutes. What am I doing with this segment? Well, it's a new segment, and I hope you guys enjoy it. It is called Good Decision, Bad Decision. And for my first episode, I wanted to do a video about John Terry as Felix Leiter, because I've always believed this is a missed opportunity. And this subject gets a fair bit of debate from James Bond fans. And I think it was a missed opportunity because the producers had a chance to give Timothy Dalton's James Bond his own set Felix Leiter in John Terry. And John Terry often cops, I think, a lot of unfair crap for his performance. And I've seen so many other videos from the other James Bond channels that pick on John Terry's performance. What's all this? Well, we've been watching Pushkin since he met a couple of days ago with Whitaker. He glanced at the Russians. Well, you've got me, James. Whitaker's put together a few samples of high-tech stuff, but he's placed no big orders yet. The guy's not a bad actor. Now, John Terry was also in Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket. Charlie's hit every major military target in Vietnam and hit him hard. In Saigon, the United States Embassy has been overrun by suicide squads. Oh, Kason is standing by to be overrun. We also have reports that a division of NVA has occupied all of the city of Hue south of the Perfume River. In strategic terms, Charlie's cut the country in half, the civilian press are about to wet their pants, and we've heard even Cronkite's going to say the war is now unwinnable. In other words, it's a huge shit sandwich and we're all gonna have to take a bite. And his performance in that was good. It was what it needed to be. Sir, does this mean that Aunt Margaret's not coming? <laughs> <laughs> so the James Bond producers would have known John Terry from work like Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket. And you don't get in a Stanley Kubrick film if you absolutely suck as an actor. So I think with John Terry, I don't think he was directed well. And I don't think that the small amount of script for his character was really well written, including this famous part. You mean this is a put up job? You mean this is a put up job? So, of course, where John Terry says, You mean this is a put up job? You mean this is a put up job? It's kind of awkwardly directed. If you have a look at it, it's from this wide angle shot. There's no cut in. I would have cut into John Terry when, he's, when he was actually about to speak and say, You mean this is a put up job? It was an opportunity for the editor, which I think would have been John Grover at the time, who I'm pretty sure edited most of John Glenn's James Bond films. Now, John Glenn is, I don't want to say who is my favorite James Bond director because I am going to do a new ranking video on that very soon, but John Glenn is right up there as my favorite James Bond director, one of them anyway. So I think he's a very good director, but I don't think he directed this scene fantastically. It's a wide shot, there's a bit of movement in it, it doesn't then cut into John Terry you know, and we're introducing him as the new Felix Leiter. So there's no real close up there and I think he should have cut into him and I think he should have talked to the actor as well with the line delivery. Then after the wide angle shot, you see a close up shot and it's just very static. There's no real movement and I think it needed movement. Now, after that delivery of, you mean this is a put up job, John Terry seemed quite natural. He seemed to flow in the scene, which is pretty workable when you're working with a fantastic actor like Timothy Dalton. But I think critics are unfairly harsh on John Terry. Now, if you look at him, 
At the end of the film, have a look at how different he is. He's there, but he's more natural. He's working easy with it, and I think it's better shot, better set up, and I think the dialogue flows better as well. Even though there's not a huge amount of dialogue, it's nice written dialogue for the scene, for the moment, and I think John Terry is really serviceable in it. David Hedison appearing as Felix Leiter in License to Kill 89 for me, that's a mistake. Like I said before, I think it would have been this brilliant continuity to have John Terry, who was in The Living Daylights, to have him in License to Kill. It made so much sense because then the audience has a chance to care about this Felix Leiter. At the time of filming for License to Kill, John Terry was 36. Timothy Dalton was 43. So, there was a closer age gap there where David Hedison was actually the grand old age of 62 in Licence to Kill playing Felix Leiter. And of course, he was well known and he was a fantastic Felix Leiter in the Roger Moore era with Live and Let Die. And I think that's where he should have stayed. But I will say this, when you look at the scenes of David Hedison in Licence to Kill, he did a great job. Oh, oh. Felix, you're no good to me with your wrecked back. <laughs> Let her go. I'm the one you want. So I'm not rubbishing David Hedison, and I don't think he did a bad job. He was actually really, really good. Very solid performance. But the reason, I'm just wondering, I don't know this, and I've never thought about this until tonight, putting this video together, but I'm wondering if the producers maybe saved money by bringing David Hedison back all these years later, because maybe would there have been a contract clause if John Terry was to come back in the next James Bond film, would there have been a bigger, you know, would it have increased the budget? You wouldn't have thought more. Like, as in, would they have had to pay John Terry more money to reappear as Felix Leiter. You wouldn't think so. But I think if that was the case, then it was worth it. But the story goes, Barbara Broccoli actually came across David Hedison in a, I think it was a New York restaurant. Barbara Broccoli was having dinner there with who knows, and David Hedison was there apparently with his wife or whatever, and they got talking, and then Barbara Broccoli's like, what, you really? I think Cubby may have been there as well. But what, you really think he could play, you know, could he play Felix Leiter again? And I believe, I think it was Cubby needed a little bit of convincing about it, but they went with him. Now, were there maybe a few wines that were being drunk that night? A few wines, maybe Barbara was really happy or whatever, and they semi-agreed there, and... You know, they gave him the role. Killing me won't stop anything, Sanchez! There are worse things than dying on me. See you in hell! <laughs> no. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. <laughs> think it was a really big mistake because I would have loved to have seen the continu continuity. Also, I think it was a disservice to John Terry. John Terry was there as Dalton's Felix Leiter act. And if you look at John Terry in the fantastic TV show, which 19 years later, it came out in 2004, 19 years later, I'm discovering it and that is the TV show Lost. So, you want to tell me what happened? A couple of guys jumped Mark Silverman. A couple of guys jumped Mark Silverman. But they didn't jump you. No. <sighs> I 
I had a boy on my table today. I don't know, maybe a year younger than you. He had a bad heart. He got real hairy real fast. Everybody's looking to your old man to make decisions. And I was able to make those decisions because at the end of the day, after the boy died, I was able to wash my hands and come home to dinner, you know, watch a little Carol Burnett laugh till my sides hurt. And how can I do that? Hmm? And even when I fail, how do I do that, Jack? And John Terry is in Lost. He plays Jack's father. And you can see, even in Lost, he is a talented actor. And I think with the material that was so heavy-handed, so emotional, so charged, and with John Glenn really on the top of his game with the actors and having a fantastic cast to put around John Terry as well, and with Dalton and then having that rapport and him working with him again, I think it would have brought the best out of John Terry. And it takes, sometimes when you back yourself as a director with actors, you can get the right notes, the right keys from them, so to speak. And I think John Glenn, especially when he knew that those scenes had to be really intense, I think John Terry would have grabbed it. So I think it's a lost opportunity. And again, as proven in Lost, John Terry can really act. But like I said earlier too, David Hedison did a fantastic job in License to Kill. So there are gonna be people that like David Hedison, and there's people that are not big fans of John Terry, but I think if you check out John Terry's other work, you'll see he was a fantastic actor. And for me, this was a bad decision not to cast John Terry as Timothy Dalton, Felix Leiter, in his two James Bond films. Guys, thanks for joining me. Till next time, keep on bonding and say hi to your mum for me. This is a put-up job.